G'day guys, right here, Coffee Coach. I'm here with another What's Hot in May 2023. Couple of things to go over. Again, I covered Kickstarter a lot in the last What's Hot in April, but there's a few things that have popped up on my radar that I didn't get to really cover there. First one is called the Final Press, which is just like a tiny little travel plunger that you can take anywhere around the world with you. It should be pretty good, it's pretty cheap. It's about $79 Australian, and literally it's like an infuser that you can use with tea, but I'm specifically interested to see how it manages to extract your coffee. It does have a mesh of 200 microns, which is about the level of espresso, that sort of grind, so you should be able to pop it in there, just swirl it around, give a couple of pumps to the plunger, releases a few more of those coffee oils, and maybe get a decent coffee. I'm not expecting a huge amount, but it'll be interesting to see if this can really just be one of those pocket travel devices that you just have to have your coffee grinds and your little final press and make coffee pretty easily anywhere around the world. So links in the description below, so check that out if you want to. I think it's got a couple of days left on it by the time this video comes out. The other coffee tech that I'm really interested in following is called the Epoch Manual Brewer. It's basically a lever machine. I'm not backing it myself personally, but I'm really interested to see where this goes. It's headed up by three really solid engineers, and you can see from the video campaign, they're not salespeople. These guys are really engineers. And you know, there's been an explosion of lever machines. The Meticulous, which I covered in the last session of What's Hot in Coffee, that is a robotic, automated, very high tech, very sophisticated, built-in scales. This one, however, the Epoch, is about as manual as you can get. There's no electronics, no computer components. It's all mechanical engineering at its best. It even has a really sophisticated way of measuring the pressure. So unlike a lot of the other ones which have a pressure gauge, this uses a sophisticated type of engineering to, as you press down, be able to interlink with the metal piston that goes down into your coffee and a little meter reading that shows you where it's sitting. Now there's two versions of this. There's the lever and there's the helix. The lever is like a, a regular lever machine, like your Lapavonis. They allow you to get up to about eight bars of pressure. It won't necessarily give you nine bars or anything above eight, which could be interesting to see whether it actually performs as well as a regular La Pavoni lever. However, the Helix, which is a completely unique design, it's actually designed for people with not much power or maybe arthritis or a, a, anyone that just doesn't really wanna put a lot of pressure onto their coffee. You actually wind it like a hand grinder and very easily gets up to 15 bars. Plus, the unique way of measuring the pressure on this, I think, is brilliant. It's got a little a tiny piece of metal in the middle, and when it's sitting on the left-hand side, that shows you your pre-infusion. And as you build up the pressure by winding it, it actually moves to the center of the piston, and then all you have to do is maintain the speed of your winding to keep that piece of metal in the middle, knowing that that's your perfect nine bar pressure. So we will be super interested to see how these go. They've already achieved their goals, so they will be shipping these and they will also reach their stretch goals of being a built-in custom tamper. They're 51 mil. They could be really good for that tinkerer personality type that wants to build their own. You can actually buy it non-built so that you build it yourself and you save a couple of hundred dollars doing that. However, I'm not sure whether it's gonna overtake the world in coffee and compete with the likes of Meticulous and other big brands like Pavoni, but I certainly think it will carve out a little niche for itself and a little community of people who are just pure engineers and want to get really great coffee. I'm super excited and I'm, as I said, I'm not backing it. It is fairly expensive, sitting around the eight, 900 pounds which in Australian dollars is almost 2.4 times. So it's fairly expensive. And when you consider that the Meticulous, which is a fully automated high tech one, is only a little bit more expensive than that, it might not be for everyone. Still, check it out in the link below and let me know if you backed it and what your thoughts are. I do really wanna get my hands on one. So if anyone in Brisbane, Australia backs one and receives one, then 
bring it into my cafe and chat with me and I'd love to just have a tinker on it and see if it really lives up to what I believe it could do. Of course, if you love this content and you wanna support my channel, give me a like, you can hit the subscribe button. Anything helps, just spread the word so that we can all celebrate coffee. I'm gonna get on to the next thing now, which is pretty interesting. Dye Fluid, the guys that invented the refractometer, the Dye Fluid R2 refractometer, and the microbalance scales have now released a new product, which will probably more for the home roasters or those small roasteries that are getting into their coffees and wanting to enhance and upskill. It's a, an analyzer. It's called the Dye Fluid Omni, and it's a particle analyzer that measures your grind of your coffee to show you the quality of it, the roast temperature, it's highly accurate. And I think this will be for most home baristas who are getting into that roasting phase of their experience or the evolution of their home barista ship. They will love this because it will help you narrow your focus in on how good the coffee quality is. So it detects your chaff, it detects your consistency for like the cracked beans and the density of your roast. So you can really start to analyze your own roasts and your own coffee. Even if you don't roast by yourself, you might want to just measure the coffees that you received in just to compare them side by side. I think this is pretty interesting. I love what these guys are creating. Can't wait to see what other products they're releasing soon. In other news, the Specialty Coffee Association have released a Robusta catalog. Canifora, or Robusta as it's known, is the other alternative species to Arabica. Now, a lot of you would know Arabica, it's what we generally drink around the world. It's about 70% of the entire export of coffee. But Robusta is very, very good. And a lot of the people who used to drink coffee 30, 40 years ago would remember Robusta. It's quite dark, it's quite bitter, it's quite intense but it has twice the amount of caffeine as Arabica, hence why it's a little bit more bitter. And it also has generally been sort of synonymous with low quality coffee. However, they're now trying to cross a lot of these species to create new hybrid species that will be more leaf rust resistant, more insect resistant, grow at lower altitudes, deal with climate change, and really produce a high quality coffee taste without the really specific needs that Arabica requires to perform well. Because Arabica, even though it is a lot more sweet and a lot more nuanced in its flavor characteristics, is also more vulnerable to the outside world. And it yields a lot less coffee cherries on each tree than your Robustas. So by combining them, you might be able to have the best of both worlds. And certainly going into the future where we're consuming more coffee and we're growing less coffee, this sort of thing really needs to happen. And this is not really tech, uh, but I really enjoy these finding these articles. There's a company called Gaia Star, which is now creating single use, fully biodegradable cups. So rather than your paper cups, which cost a lot to produce, these are made from three ingredients, water, clay, salt. Basically, it's part of the soil. And what happens is you, these aren't rolled out everywhere around the world yet, but they will be soon. How it works is that you can get a takeaway coffee from your local cafe, have your coffee in it, when you're finished, smash it on the ground, stomp on it, get it into the dirt, and it just dissolves into the ground. And it's cheaper to produce, obviously a lot less environmental impact than any other single use coffee cup around. I'm really excited to see where this develops. I'm trying to get my hands on some. They don't ship to Australia yet. But when I do, I really want to try them out because I love drinking from ceramic cups. I don't enjoy drinking from takeaway cups. And so if I can have a takeaway cup that's essentially a ceramic feel, but I don't feel bad about throwing it in the bin or even in the recycling where I know it's costing a lot of money to recycle, then that's something that I would really get behind and I would replace all of my single use cups in my cafe with these ones from Gaia Star. So links in the description below, check it out. But that's it from me and what's hot in coffee in May. I'm Ryde, your coffee coach, and as always, enjoy your brew.